Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, my lesson is on exponential growth and decay. Today, you, the student, will identify exponential growth and decay functions, and you will interpret exponential growth and decay functions. As we proceed through the lesson today, the question I want you asking yourself as we go through and be able to answer by the end of the lesson is what are characteristics of exponential growth and exponential decay functions? So if you can start to think of these functions as having specific characteristics, it'll be far easier for you to determine which is which. Let's start with exponential growth. Exponential growth is a pattern of data that shows greater increases by a constant factor with passing time. This creates the curve of the exponential function. So in a previous lesson, we talked about exponential functions, characteristics, and how to graph them. And now we're going to talk about specific examples of real-world problems that show growth. Here are some real-world examples. Food spoiling. Mold growing on spoiling food is an example of exponential growth. Pandemics. COVID-19 is an exponential function. Compound interest, so the interest you earn in a savings account every month. An invasive species, cancer cells, fire. So fire grows exponentially. So what happens here is things are multiplying. They're growing by a factor. So when you start with one person infected, that person infects um, with a virus. They in, couldn't uh, infect many people. And then those many people go on to infect many more people. So it just kind of spiderwebs out, and that's what we call an exponential growth function. An exponential growth function is written in this form. Our base is 1 plus a rate of growth. Okay, so sometimes this rate of growth is called, is re, um, referred to as a percent, and you're going to write it as a decimal, and you'll see a decimal in here. But you have the one whole. So when something's growing, you have what it was, and it keeps growing. So let's talk about money for a minute. If you put $100 in your savings account and you do not touch it, meaning you don't withdraw it and spend it, you're going to get interest on that in one month. So you're going to have 100% of the money you had plus the percent of interest added into the account. The next month, you're going to have earned interest on the previous month's interest plus that $100. So if you don't touch it, you keep earning interest on the interest that you've earned in the previous month. So you can see how we call that compounded interest. So this A is your initial amount. So if we were going to invest $100, we would say $100. And that one represents that 100% of that $100. So you're always going to have that if you don't touch it. And then it's going to keep compounding. And this exponent would be the number of months that you keep it in the bank. So it could work a different way. You know, initially there were um, three cancer cells in a body. And those don't go away. Those continue, each of them continue to grow and spread more cells. So um, a is always going to be greater than zero because then you wouldn't have a function because zero multiplied by anything is zero. And R must also be greater than zero because otherwise it wouldn't be increasing. Your base would be one. And you know from an exponential function, the base must be greater than one. So right here we have our initial amount. This is our final amount after the period of time. So the rate of growth. So whether you're talking about a flu, mold, or interest in a bank, it's growing over time. And this is our growth factor. Remembering that one is there to represent 100% of what you already have plus a new rate. Exponential decay is a pattern of data that shows something decreasing rapidly by a constant factor with passing time, creating the curve of an exponential function. So examples of exponential decay are value of a car that doesn't decrease at a constant rate. So when you drive a car off a lot, brand new or not, it starts decreasing in value, okay? And it's not at a constant rate, it's an exponential function. Values of electronics are a perfect example. Computers, cell phones, 
I'm sure you know that as soon as you have one in your possession, it's no longer worth what you paid for. And then sometimes you refer to half-life. That's a science term. We talk about that as far as pesticides disintegrating into the ground and how far it takes to um, eradicate itself. Radioactive material is another one. So um, you'll hear about those later on in science courses. Let's talk about what the exponential decay function looks like when written as an equation. So we have our final amount here. That's what it's equal to. You still have an initial amount. You started with something. So let's say that you've bought a car. Maybe your car costs $30,000. That's your initial amount. So you have your factor of 1 here. You have that 1 showing that we have a decay factor. So the rate of decay is subtracted from that because we're going to decrease our initial amount. Okay, some cars gain value, but some cars do not. And then your exponent is going to be the amount of time. So you could calculate if you knew the rate of decay or the rate of decrease of the value of a car or a cell phone, you could project what it would be worth. <laughs> One fun, um, fun fact to note is we've learned in a previous lesson that an exponential function is never equal to zero. It never crosses the x-axis. So I always like to ask students, in my class every year a question about the value of a car after uh, you know a hundred years and it will never equal zero so think about it you always even just have scrap metal okay but an exponential function will never equal zero all right let's talk about identifying an exponential growth and decay function so you can determine whether a function is exponential or growth or exponential decay by identifying different characteristics so for exponential growth, if you're going to look at an equation, the value of the base of the power is going to be greater than 1. So if you are asked that, you look at the base of the power. If it's greater than 1, you know it's exponential growth. If you're looking at a table of values, you always have to see x increasing by 1 as y increases by the same factor that's greater than 1. For exponential decay, in an equation, the value of the base of the power is greater than 0 and less than 1. Table of values, as x is increasing by 1, y is decreasing by the same factor. It has to be greater than 0 and less than 1. So let's go ahead and see if we can identify these characteristics in a few examples. So I say your turn here, but I'll model this one for you. So we want to determine whether this table represents an exponential growth function or an exponential decay function or neither. And we want you to explain. So first I'm going to identify that the x is increasing by 1 and the y values are decreasing by a factor of 1 3rd. So 270 times 1 3rd is 90, 90 times 1 3rd is 30, and 30 times 1 3rd is 10. So because this is decreasing by a constant factor of one-third, we know that this table represents an exponential decay function. Okay, your turn. I would like you to pause this video, go ahead and determine what kind of function this is, either growth or decay or neither, and be able to explain. Come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So. The x is increasing by 1. The y values are increasing by a factor of 2. 5 times 2 is 10, and so on. So this table represents an exponential growth function six is, since as x is increasing by 1, y increases by a factor of 2. Try this one. Please pause, come back, and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So as x increases by 1, y decreases by a factor of one-fourth. Therefore, this table represents an exponential decay function, since as x is increasing by one, y decreases by a factor of one-fourth. Here's another one for you. Please pause and come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. As x is increasing by two, y is increasing by seven. So this table represents neither. This is actually a linear function because as x is increasing by 2, y is increasing by a constant rate of 7. 
So it's not increasing by a factor, but a constant rate. Now we have an equation. I'm going to model this one for you, even though I say your turn. We want to determine whether or not this represents an exponential growth or decay function and identify the rate of change as a percent. So here we go. The base of the power, so here's our power. The base of the power is greater than 1. So I know that this is an exponential growth function. Now I want to identify the rate of change. So remember, an exponential growth is 100% of the initial amount plus the rate of change. So here we have a rate of change that is 7% because 0.07 .07 is 7%. Okay, your turn. Please identify whether or not this is exponential growth or decay and identify the rate of change as a percent. Please pause, come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So we have a base of less than 1, so this is an exponential decay function. And remember, we're going to subtract that. We're subtracting from the whole. So our one whole subtract the 0 0.98 gives us a rate of change of 2%. Here's another one for you to try. Go ahead and pause, come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So the base of this power is less than one, so this is an exponential decay function. We're going to subtract the factor right here from one, and our rate of change is 8%. Here's another one. Go ahead and pause, come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So the base of our power is greater than one, so it's exponential growth. Remember, we're adding to the 100% that we started with, and 0.2 is 20%. So our rate of change is 20% in this exponential growth function. That's exponential growth and decay. I hope you'll come back soon and watch another video. Please subscribe to my channel and register for notifications so that you know when I post new videos. Have a great day.